Hi friends! In this video we are going to be painting on plein air or outdoors. And I have asked my friend, Sarnia artist Mary Kilbreth, to help with this video. Mary has been interested in all forms of art since childhood. She has studied painting with watercolors, acrylics, and oil paints. She studied pottery, all with various teachers over the years. We met in the park so that she could demonstrate and share her knowledge of painting. And I will show you more of how she created this painting shortly. But first, I want to show you a few things to help you prepare for your own en plein air experience. You will find that we have included a bottle of white paint and a bottle of each of the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Primary colors can be combined to create other colors. And you can learn more about this in the Exploring Color Theory video that we've made on our YouTube channel. For this project, we are going to take a look at another important element of color mixing called tinting. And in your Make Art Kit, you will find an activity sheet to help along with this. Tinting is the term for lightening paint colors with white paint. To start, apply white paint and the untinted blue paint into the labeled boxes along the top row. Then mix equal amounts of white paint with the blue to find the mid-tone and paint this into the center box. From this mid-tint, you can add a touch more white to create a blue tint that is the step lighter and paint that into the box beside the white paint. Then you can add a bit more blue to make a blue that is a tint darker and paint that into the box on the other side next to the blue. Try doing this again with the red and the yellow paint. You might notice that with darker colors like blue and red, it is possible to make even more lighter tints than just the three boxes on this page. But since yellow is a lighter color already, there may not be as many lighter tints that can be achieved. The box that we have packed this kit into can be converted into a small easel with just a few pieces of masking tape. Tape the back fold to each back corner of the box and tape your paper into the inside lid and then you're ready to paint anywhere. And you can paint anywhere. Wherever you are, you have unique locations waiting to be explored and captured in your paintings. If you enjoy the energy of the city, you might want to try painting architecture, people, and cars. If you're near the beach, you could try painting windy skies with clouds and the sand and water. Before you venture out to your chosen location, make sure you have everything that you need. You might notice that Mary has brought a second paintbrush to use from home and a pencil will come in handy for sketching out ideas. Pack things like a sun hat, sunscreen, and drinking water. You might want to bring a blanket to sit on or a folding chair. We came prepared with this sunshade, but we also made sure to plan our painting excursion for first thing in the morning before the summer day warmed up too much. When you are all set up at your chosen location, you can use the viewfinder to help find and frame your composition. Your eyes have a larger perspective than what you can fit onto your page. The viewfinder will help you focus on only your composition instead of the entire environment around it. Notice where the light is coming from and where the shadows are before you start. The light and shadows will move throughout the day, so try to avoid chasing the light as you work. Snapping a quick photo through the viewfinder can really help you with this. Once you have settled on the view that you want to capture in your painting, sketch out your composition with a pencil. After sketching out your composition, you are ready to start painting. What colors do you see when looking through your viewfinder? 
whatever colors you see are the colors that you'll want to create by mixing your paint. Pour a small amount of each paint onto a sheet of wax paper and mix your paints using a wet paintbrush to create the color palette that you'll be working with. You can make gray by mixing even portions of all three primary colors together. You can add a bit more blue to make a cool gray or add yellow and red to make a warmer gray. Stay true to your vision. You don't need to paint exactly what you see. In fact, many painters, when painting on plein air, are more interested in trying to capture the feeling of the day or time that they are painting. Changing how you see what you're painting from a recognizable object to a basic shape can help you paint more accurately. Mary is painting a landscape, but she is also observing how the objects in the landscape can be made up of circles, cones, triangles, and squares. This is a trick that many plein air painters use. Be sure to rinse your paint brushes and squeeze out the excess water and paint with a rag or paper towel to be sure that your brush is clean. Working quickly will help to keep your paint from drying too fast. Try setting a time to complete your work by. What kind of painting could you achieve in 30 minutes or less? And how would that painting change if you had painted for an hour? If you are painting in the evening, you will want to make sure that you finish before it gets too dark. You can also try painting around the same time over two days. Commit yourself to the mindset that what you are painting is not precious. Find the rhythm. How do your eyes naturally move around the painting? And how can you, as the artist, Manipulate the painting to control how the viewer's eyes move around the painting. Each painting will lead you to the next one, and we have provided you with multiple pages of paper so that you can keep painting and experimenting on plein air. Where will your painting take you?